Hello friends, this is Jiatsu Bakuhatsu, and welcome to Let's Play Clock. Uh, this is a cult classic game, I guess you could say, uh, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, just uh, kind of your standard 16-bit platformer. Uh, didn't exactly uh, do particularly well back when it was first released. Like I said, cult classic and everything, as those games tend to go. Uh, it's... So yeah, it's, this game is actually rather obscure. It's kind of picked up a little bit more of a reputation, kind of in the internet age since its release, but uh, believe it or not, I did actually play this game a fair bit uh, back in the day. Uh, this is another one of those games that uh, my neighbors actually owned, so I actually uh, borrowed this one on a fairly regular basis and actually, yeah, uh, played, played a fair bit of this game uh, back in the day in spite of its obscurity, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat game, so I thought... Uh, yeah, you know, why not do a LP series for the old YouTube channel here? This is exactly the kind of game that I like to show off for you peeps here on YouTube. I guess we'll just finish up the little control explanation demo here. Or actually, for, so for some reason, if you actually leave it, like, idle for a long time here, you actually get, like, a bunch of different demos and, like, really in-depth explanations of just like all the different obstacles in the games and little bios of the enemies and stuff but it's like it's like seriously it's like almost like just about like a dozen like uh, attract demos basically if you leave out the title screen long enough um i'm not going to sit through all of those to force you uh, to see them all in fact this one's running a bit longer than i expected you know what fuck it let's just head right into the game Oh wow, it literally headed me right into the game. Oh well, uh, there, there, you actually have basically no options on the title screen anyways. Your only option is the two difficulty settings, either normal or children, which is uh, kind of the Konami style of uh, easy modes from back in about this era. You basically, on, on children mode, it's, or I think it's child's play. Yeah, they call it child's play. And uh, which basically takes you through a, a sort of abridged version of the game with a bunch of the levels and bosses cut out. Which is actually not a bad way to play the game, it turns out. I, uh, that's actually mostly the way I played this game back in the day and is the only way I was ever able to beat it. Because this is an exceptionally difficult and rather long game. And it, there is no save or password system whatsoever, so you will basically have to beat it in one sitting. In fact, yeah, you can see, like, all of this this big giant island, and it's all those flags all over the place, those are all levels that we have to go to. And they're pretty big, expansive levels, and that's not even all the levels there are, either. There's actually three additional islands, or three additional areas we'll have to go on top of that. And yeah, Plock's just uh, explaining the plot here. And actually, yeah, I guess since I sat through the demo, that saves me the trouble of explaining the basic controls as well. But yeah, this is actually a nice little game. I do like this game quite a bit. Not exactly one of my all-time favorites, but it kind of, just kind of, you know, the way those cult classics go sometimes as a result of its sort of obscurity and the fact that it's good enough to have deserved to have done better, in my opinion, if that makes any sense. The game, the game deserved kind of a better lot than it got, a better shake from the consumers back in the day. So, uh... Yeah, it kind of has a special place in my heart for that reason, although uh, the game does have its share of problems, but on the whole it's, uh, you know, one of the better uh, 2D platformers of the era. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna go through and uh, make a run of it and have a grand old time, hopefully. So, mostly a grand old time, to be honest. Uh, you know, we'll get into that later. Bas basically, it's uh, a lot a lot of the goodness and badness of this game all comes from sort of the same source, is basically the level design. Uh, some of the level design in this game is actually quite brilliant. I love, especially some of the larger levels we'll see later on and the way they just sort of, uh, the clever ways they they kind of loop back in on themselves. And it's, I, I don't know, I will, you know, I'll point out stuff in detail that's good about the level design later on once we get to the good levels. But uh so that's probably the best point, best part of the game, I think, is uh, the level design. Oh yeah, we got this buzzsaw here. Let's you skip ahead in the level. I actually don't want to be skipping too much of these levels, uh, just because uh, basically I'm going to be stocking up as many lives as I can uh, going into the end game. You'll see me basically never die in the early parts of the game. That's going to change <laughs> uh, once we get to the last few get levels. The, the game has a very dramatic ramp up in difficulty beyond a certain point, and I'm going to want to have a big old stock of lives 
uh, once we get there. And that's that kind of goes to, again, the, the weakest part of the game, I think, which is also its level design. <laughs> Some of the levels in this game are uh, pretty shitty, <laughs> in my opinion. And uh, they, they actually, the, the kind of bad levels basically tend to fall at the very beginning and especially at the very end of the game. So the game's kind of bookended by kind of some mediocre to terrible levels and uh, gets really, really good in like the good big meaty center of the game, which is where the really good stuff happens. As you can see, uh, this these early levels here are actually kind of not terribly representative of the game's overall level design. You can see it's just like very short levels, very crowded with kind of enemies and obstacles all over the place, and uh, very, very kind of simple and linear, which is not really the way most of the games are. Basically, the game's divided into, I think it's four different sections, and uh, each section kind of has its own little approach, sort of its own different way that the levels are designed. And yeah, that this, uh, what, it, what is this, Cotton Island here is uh, basically, or actually it's telling us to go down there, I'm actually not going to do that. So basically, I, I mentioned how the game, I guess another kind of problem with the game is again, it's extremely long. I think it's on my test run, it took me just, just under three hours <laughs> to beat the game, actually. And it's also extremely difficult, and it has a really silly stupid continue system that I'll get into later, but, uh, uh, what was I gonna say? But yeah, they, uh, basically sort of, sort of Mario 3 style, uh, you can get through the, the game does have these little warp zones that you can find throughout the game that'll, uh, really help you speed through the game, actually. I think the game has, or I'm just, I should, probably should have looked this up ahead of time, but, uh, I, I would I would estimate somewhere on the order of like about 30 levels or so, pro probably closer to 40 levels in this game, all told. And yeah, basically the most efficient warping path through the game, you only have to clear like probably less than 10 levels and mostly pretty short ones as well. But uh, alas, if you want to go through no, war no warp, just like I'm doing here, uh, it's going to take you a good bit of time. Actually, is this a warp zone right here? Okay, so you notice... Okay, it isn't. But uh, you'll notice that the way that health pickups work in this game is a bit unusual. I don't think the little tutorial demo covered it. But uh, yeah, basically you've got these little fruits hanging around on certain places. And uh, you can... Th those fruits pay, uh, heal very, very little damage from you. Uh, but you can... Uh, so you can hit those fruits in order to sort of ripen them up and make them bigger and then collect them afterwards. The problem is if you hit the fruit uh, too many times, then it'll just explode and you get nothing. So uh, yeah, a normal health pickup, you want to hit it twice in order to uh, get the full amount of health from it. But the, uh, uh, the sort of the tricky thing is that some of the health pickups are actually uh, hidden warps that'll uh, basically send you into a mini game that'll give you up the opportunity to warp forward several stages in the game. Actually, some of these warps are like really substantial. You can save like tens of minutes uh, on some of these warp zones. I'm gonna, tr like I said, I'm gonna clear all the levels, but I think I'm gonna try to at least see one of the warp zones. So that seems like kind of a dumb system. It's like, okay, I got like these health pickups, but some of them are actually warp zones, so I want to hit them. But if I'm wrong about them being warp zones, then they explode. Uh, the game, again though, the level design is actually pretty good in uh, sort of cluing you in on which uh, health pickups are actually secret warps and which ones are just plain old health pickups. Basically the, the warp ones uh, tend to be kind of hidden, kind of slightly out of the way. And actually, in addition to the warps, uh, some of them are just plain old special stages, like you saw that last one I picked up, where it just uh, basically takes you to a little bonus area where you get a bunch of shells. Shells, of course, being kind of your standard, you know, 2D platformer, collect enough of them, and you get a bonus life, a bonus plock, as it were. And actually, those are going to be pretty crucial. You're going to see me uh, going out of my way to collect these things. Or actually, you know what? I know that there is a warp uh, near here, so we're going to show off that one, and I'm just gonna, sh just to show off the bonus stage that you get, and then I'm gonna deliberately lose it, uh, just to make sure that we aren't skipping any levels, assuming I can even make it. So you can see everything actually moves kind of quickly, that's the, just the animation is really fluid and really fast, it can be actually really difficult to, uh, 
dodge the enemies at a, at a given time. And actually, it's okay. So the, the gimmick with the special stages is you've got all sorts of different vehicles. And it's not all just like, you know, rocket pack here that you see here is the special stage. Uh, you get all sorts of different vehicles. There's like tons and tons of different vehicles that you can see in uh, the different, uh, basically... Uh, warp, warp stages and yeah you've got the timer there and basically I got to get to the end of the level here and uh, if I make it to the goal in time I will warp forward uh, probably a substantial way through the game actually I'll probably skip the first boss if I clear this one which I actually I actually don't want to do that so we're gonna make sure not oh yeah you know what I actually can destroy these logs the logs are typically invincible to your regular attacks yeah that's the finish line right there we're just gonna hang out here Okay, so that's your basic warp zone. I'd love to show off more of them just to uh, show off the different vehicles that you get, but uh, there will be no need for that, actually, it turns out. We'll uh, get to that later in the game. Uh, but yeah, Cotton Island, and yeah, basically, Cotton Island, the level design here is, again, it's got kind of some neat stuff going on, a lot of different obstacles, keeps things varied nicely, which I always, again, as always, I always love in these kinds of games, but... Uh, one thing that the game, one thing, and actually another kind of small problem I think the game has overall is that uh, things come at you. Whoops! Ah, screwed it up. Oh, this is oh, this is a kind of an a, a example of bullshit level design right here. Okay, so cool. I got this power up, this little costume, and basically to get back up, ah, yeah, I gotta. You can't actually. There's no visual cue for jumping on that platform, and that platform's the only way up. So you basically, yeah, gotta time it just right. Oh, that's actually kind of a, some bullshit level design right there. I was actually trying to grab the kind of tricky buzz saw that you can get right there, but uh, the hit detection is kind of a bit, not exactly dodgy, but your your character sprite is actually a little bit uh, bigger. Or, yeah, the, the hitbox is a little bit smaller than your... Ah, I blew it up. But uh, your hitbox is actually a little bit smaller than your, your regular character sprite, which is uh, actually usually a good thing for you. Uh, when you're trying to dodge enemy hits, there will be one boss in particular, we'll see very uh, later on, where, uh, yeah, the kind of small hitbox really works out in your favor. Unfortunately, it's not so great when you're trying to pick up, uh, yeah, basically pick up objects and power-ups on very quickly moving platforms. But yeah, a lot of the challenge in these early levels is basically just stuff flying at you almost faster than you can react to it. You've got to have, like, really... Like, highly honed reflexes, basically, uh, to clear a lot of these uh, early stages. And that's and sometimes it's not even reflexes. Sometimes the game just fucks you over, and there's literally nothing you can do to react to it. And it's like... Oh, we get, we get the little freeze frame there, so we can yeah see what's coming. So yeah, basically this is kind of a fool me once, fool me twice type thing. This is the gimmick for this uh, level here. At least this first part of the level is, yeah, these logs falling on your head before you can even react to them, so you gotta kind of bait them out. And as far as I can tell, there's no, like, visual cue as to when the logs are going to drop. You just kind of gotta let them drop on your head a couple times before you realize the quote-unquote gimmick. And, uh... Yeah, basically just edge forward very, very slowly to avoid it from there. And did I... Yeah, I said uh, the logs are indestructible, at least on this difficulty setting. As I've mentioned, uh, the the reduction in the number of levels you have to play is actually not the only thing that's different in the Child's Play difficulty. Actually, Child's Play makes the game substantially easier, and it actually fixes kind of some of those small problems that I mentioned. Oops. Never mind. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Heard my phone go off unexpectedly there for a second. But, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, so, some of the game's minor problems are kind of alleviated somewhat by, in the Child's Play difficulty. First off, all of... So I mentioned how it's kind of unfair. The enemies kind of rush at you a lot of the time faster than you can react to them. And you got to kind of predict when they're coming or memorize the levels or something to deal with them. And that's kind of bad, shitty level design when that happens a lot of the time, to be honest. But, uh... On Child's Play mode, uh, the enemies and basically all of the projectiles and enemies and everything move at half speed. So it's much more manageable on, the, on that mode, and actually a lot more fair, I think. And, uh, and yeah, there's almost no downside to playing in uh, Child's Play mode, other than the fact that you don't get to play uh, a bunch of the levels in the game. Though honestly, a lot of the levels that you skip are a lot of... Some of the good levels in the game, but mostly a lot of the worst levels, too. It's almost like they realized uh, some of these levels aren't as great as the others. Let's just skip some of those when they play on easy mode. So actually, on, to be quite honest, 
I think this game is best enjoyed on child's play mode. I think that's the most fun and fair and just just the best way to enjoy the game. I'm just kind of... Although with that being said, if you want like an extreme challenge for like hardcore gamers, which, you know, I kind of fashion myself to be someone in that category. Um, yeah, you do, you do get quite a run for your money on the regular difficulty setting. You see that this was the first boss here. Actually, a neat little boss fight. It's surprisingly challenging uh, for the first uh, boss of the game. But yeah, that uh, basically does it for the first uh, section of the game here. That's Cotton Island cleared. So you might think, oh, it's four sections of the game. First one done in 15 minutes. How is this going to take three hours? Uh, the Basically, the main bulk of the game takes play on a place on Acrylic Island, which we'll be getting to, um, I guess, probably in the next video, most likely. Yeah, this would be a good place to cut it here, I think. So, actually, you know what? It, it, it's, it's almost a good place to wrap up the game. It seems good. We got the flag, game done, finished. But we arrive home the next morning to find... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, no, he's been duped. The whole square flag on Cotton Island thing was a ruse. Apparently, the Bobbins brothers were working with the fleas to replace all of the plock flags on acrylic with flea flags. And that's that's the whole plot. <laughs> that's li literally it. The fleas have decolonized acrylic island, I guess. Or I guess colonized it away from plock anyways. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to set to work on uh, starting in the uh, next episode. Clear out the flea flags. I'll see you then. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.